Welcome to God of Glory, Kings of Honor Ministries. My name is Rod James. Appreciate you joining us today. We're going to be looking today at Revelation chapter 19, verses 17 to 21. And I want to speak to you today about the remaining ones. Revelation 19, 17 to 21 says, And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that you may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. That word remnant there in verse 21 is loipoi in the Greek, and it means the remaining ones. And that's what title I gave to this message, the remaining ones, those left behind. I want to take just a minute, this won't be a very long message at all, but I want to take just a minute to show you the difference in two words that we've talked about before. One is katakeo, and it means to be housed permanently. And one is skeno, and it means to reside in protection and communion. They both are the word dwell or inhabit or dwellest or dwelleth in the King James. They mean two very different things. The katokeo is for those who are left behind, the remaining ones on earth that are going to suffer through the tribulation time. Skeno means to reside in protection and communion, and it is reserved for those born-again Christians that are with Christ in heaven. Very quickly, Revelation 2.13. I know your works and where you dwellest. That's the word katokeo. Even where Satan's throne is, and you hold fast my name, and have not denied my faith. Even in those days where an Antipas was my faithful martyr who was slain among you where, sweet, where Satan dwelleth. Catocheo, house permanently here on earth. Revelation 3.10 Because you have kept the word of my patience, I also will keep you from, or ek, out of the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth that are housed permanently here in mind, heart, body, and soul. That's the Greek word katokeo. It'll say dwell for both words, but they mean so totally different things. Revelation chapter 6, verse 10. And they cry with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, do you not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth, that are housed permanently on earth? Revelation 11, verse 10. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them. Two great prophets have died, and they have an Antichrist Christmas. They give gifts one to another. Because of the death of these two great prophets of God that were trying to tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ. They were trying to witness to them. And they celebrate and rejoice their death just like people rejoice the birth of the Savior. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall sing gifts one to another. 
because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. Revelation 13, verse 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. It's talking about the Antichrist, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Revelation 13, 12. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him and causes the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. That's the false prophet forcing people to worship the Antichrist. Those people that are stuck here, left here, the remnant that remain behind after the rapture. Re Revelation 13, 14. And deceives them that dwell on the earth by means of these miracles, which he has power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. Revelation 14, 6, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. God is still trying to reach them in spite of themselves. God sent an angel to preach the message during the tribulation after they killed the two great prophets after the entire planet had rejected God he still sent a messenger Revelation 17 2 With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. The word inhabitants there is the same word that they translated dwell. It's katokeo. Revelation 17, 8. The beast that you saw was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. Revelation 8.13 I promise this is going to be the longest part of this message. It's important to understand the difference when the King James people translated the word they use the same word for two very different meaning words it is the word dwell but one means to dwell like you're in prison one means to dwell like you're on a paradise island one is dwelling in heaven one is dwelling down here on earth awaiting your sentence to be in hell it's quite different Revelation 8:13. And I beheld in the midst of heaven, and I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, by reason of the other voices of the trumpet and of the three angels which are yet to sound. Woe always means judgment. He said, Judgment, judgment, judgment to them that dwell on the earth. As I've said before, the Word says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ. God has not prepared us, left us, for His wrath. This isn't for us. Here's the ones that are for us. Revelation 7.15 Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve Him day and night in His temple, and he that sits on the throne shall dwell among them. That's the word skeno. It means to reside in protection and communion. We get to reside in his glory. We get to reside in an everlasting condition of health, peace, safety, prosperity, anything you want to attach to heaven that's in a good way. That is our dwelling. Revelation 12, 12. 
has the distinction of using both words. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you that dwell in them. That is, to reside in protection and communion. You that dwell in heaven. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath, because he knows that he has but a short time. That's the word katokeo. Revelation 13, 6. And he opened his mouth and blasphemed against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven, them that reside in protection and communion in heaven. He can't touch us anymore. He can't make us sick. He can't cause us to have loss. Death won't affect us anymore. No disease. No accidents. Nothing. Because we will be residing protection and communion. i got one last verse to read you. Revelation 21, verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And He will dwell with them. And they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. We're going to reside with God in his home. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you will be also. There you will be skeno. There you will be in residing in protection and communion. Nothing bad will ever happen to you ever again throughout all eternity. You'll never have so much as a sniffle. That's a promise from the Lord Jesus Christ. So the two different words. And the word that we look at last in verse 21 is remnant in the English. It's loi poi in the Greek, and it is the remaining ones, those left behind, those that dwell upon the earth, those that are awaiting judgment. Verse 17 of Revelation 19, And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together to the supper of the great God. That is God's cleanup crew, because it's going to be a mess. When we looked at the last message that we looked at about the second coming, we saw that the Lord Jesus Christ wasn't coming back as a beautiful little baby born to the Virgin Mary or laying in a manger, being given gifts as a toddler by the wise men that traveled and brought him gold and frankincense and myrrh. That's not how he's coming back. He's not coming back to be a great teacher. He's not coming back to ride meekly on a donkey on the way into Jerusalem while the crowd of people throw down their coats and things in front of them and palm leaves and cry, Hosanna in the highest, glory be to God, as they welcome the Messiah to Jerusalem. He's coming back to stomp out evil, to literally stomp this world into the condition it should be in. And all that will be left then of this planet is the carcasses of those that never received him as their Lord and Savior. Revelation 19:18. That you may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and then to sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. Who needs to repent? Just poor people? Just fat people? 
just certain colors of people to just you know just women do they just need to repent or just men now this clearly says that everybody needs to repent Romans 3.23 says for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God we have all sinned we're all guilty if we don't receive Jesus Christ and his sacrifice on the cross his shed blood that was shed on our behalf to be the payment for our sin he took our place in death he took our place as sin for us he that knew no sin became sin for us so we might be made the righteousness of God in him it's the great transformation he took upon himself every disease every hurt every sickness and every sin while he hung on that cross so that we if we receive that by faith would no longer be found guilty or held in contempt because we've been declared innocent who needs to repent the kings the captains the mighty men the free the slaves the small the great that takes in everybody it takes in rich and poor it takes in black and white it takes in yellow and brown and red it, it takes in everybody whether you're the president or a king or whether you're someone that's on uh, disability or someone that's on welfare your social or financial standing doesn't matter at all how tall you are how thin you are how short you are how fat you are nothing about you matters except that you're a sinner and Jesus died on the cross to save you who can repent everybody first Timothy chapter 2 verses 1 through 6 says I exhort therefore that first of all supplications prayers intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men that includes women too the word woman means from man it's mankind it just means to be given for all you should pray for everyone for kings and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior who will have all men to be saved all people that's his wish that's his will that all would be saved but not all obey his will if all obeyed his will every human being would be born again who will have all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth for there's one God and one mediator between God and men the man Christ Jesus who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time and that time is now that time is absolutely now we have but a short time left before we go from this condition of witnessing for Christ to being testifying about the things he's done for us whether it be in healings or in salvations or in mighty miraculous workings of churches being built and people who have never heard the gospel receiving salvation of people being healed because we're soon going to move into the condition of where we're dwelling in heaven and those that haven't received him will be dwelling on earth verse 19 and I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army he saw the Antichrist saw the kings of the earth saw the armies gathered to make war against Christ good luck 
gathered to make war against his army. Good luck. You know, Satan's stupid. He really is. People give him entirely too much credit. Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 to 15, shows us what was going through Satan's mind when he rebelled against God Almighty. And I emphasize Almighty. It says, How are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How are you cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations? For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet you shall be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. He really thought he was going to defeat God. How absolutely dumb can you possibly be? He thought even if he got a lot of the angels to join him, he could defeat God. He only managed to recruit a third of them. They're all so stupid. He's almighty God. He cannot be defeated. No one knows what he knows. No one can do what he does. He can't be injured, hurt, or displaced in any way. He's almighty God. Psalm chapter 2, verses 1 through 4 says, Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers that take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. He's going to laugh at them for the fools that they are running around like little ants trying to conquer a king's castle. Revelation 19, 20. And the beast, that's the Antichrist, was taken, and with him the false prophet that did miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that had worshipped his image, these both were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. They were taken. Jesus said, in Luke eleven twenty, If I, by the finger of God, cast out demons, then you know that the kingdom of God has come near to you. He was telling them, who he was. He was telling them that he's the King of Kings, that he's the Lord of Lords, that he's God Almighty, he came down in human form to die on the, on the cross for us. He cast out demons with just a flick of his finger. It wasn't a problem whatsoever. And yet Satan thought he was going to defeat him. They gather themselves together against Christ, against his army. They're all, they got all their nuclear weapons and all their jets and all their machine guns and all their tanks all gathered together. And in less than a second, they're all destroyed. How dumb. The Antichrist was taken and the false prophet. He deceived them that had the mark. 666, the mark of the beast. It's the number of a man and his number 666. He deceived them that had worshipped the image. And both were cast into the lake of fire. Revelation 19.21 in closing. And the remnant, the loy poi, the remaining ones. There was a series of books and movies done. Left behind. 
those left behind, those that are left to dwell on the earth, Catecheo, like they're housed in a prison they can't escape from. They're housed awaiting their punishment. They're housed in disgrace and pain and sickness and coming judgment. There's no escape. The only escape is Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. He's the key to the door. And he's the door. And he's the way to the door. And you're not going to get the key or the door or be able to go through the door without him. The remnant, the loipoi, the remaining ones were slain. They were killed by the sword of Christ, the sword of which is the word of God that proceeds out of his mouth and the fowls the birds the vultures were filled with their flesh don't be left behind don't leave others behind oh you've got 10 minutes left or 10 days left or 10 years left or whatever time we have left Open your mouth and tell people about Jesus Christ if you're a Christian. And if you're not a Christian, I wouldn't wait. You never know what a day is going to bring forth. You could have some horrible disease pronounced upon you at your next doctor's visit. You could be in a car accident. Lightning could strike you. A hurricane like the one that's coming up out of the Gulf and hitting Florida and Georgia and those areas. It's knocked out power to millions of people. It's already killed several people. They said it's an unlivable surge of water. If you're anywhere near that, you're going to drown. We never know what's going to happen. Don't be left behind. Don't be catokeo. Don't be housed and imprisoned here with no escape. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Would you bow with me for a closing prayer, please? Father, we thank you for the salvation that we have offered to us through your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you that his shed blood on the cross paid the price for our sin. And if we receive that gift by faith, if we receive it, that you'll forgive us of our sins. I want to ask you just now, if you've never received Christ as your Savior, to open your mouth and talk to Him. You know, prayer doesn't have to be these and thous and amens and thouest and dozest and all that silly stuff. We don't talk like that anymore. My favorite Bible is the King James Version. It talks like that because that's how they talked. But you talk to God just like you would talk to anybody else. With more reverence and respect, obviously. But just talk to Him like you would talk to your own Father. You don't have to call Him God. If He's become your Father, He's your Father. I never called my father Mr. James when he was alive. I called him Dad. Say a prayer like this with me just now. If you haven't received him, say, Lord Jesus, I thank you that you died on the cross to save me. I thank you that your shed blood is the one-time perfect offering for the sins of the world and for my sins. I thank you that you've paid the price for everything that's been done from the beginning of time till the end of time. And I receive that gift just now. I receive it in your name. I receive it because you offered it to me. And I take you up on that contract, Lord Jesus. I thank you up, thank, thank you and take you up on that covenant that you offered to us. In Jesus' name, save me now and become the Lord and Savior of my life. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. Appreciate you watching these or listening to these. However you're
coming to uh, hear these messages. I'd ask that you would share these with your family and friends. Share them on social media, uh, whatever that may be, so that we can reach more and more people with the gospel. We'll be back next week in uh, Revelation chapter 20. We're getting down. There's 22 chapters in this book, and we're getting down towards the end. We thank you for going along with us. Thank you. You have a great week, and we will see you next week. Amen.